Hello, this is the lawsuit Streisand effect explained extravaganza. <laughs> so this is the second part of a video I did the other day um, where Christopher Boozy and the Dogshite Sussex Squad's SS Polizei units were having a podcast uh, talking about doxing people and suing people and, you know, just all of the regular ridiculous stuff. So I'm going to play more of that for you and show the hypocrisy, show the lie, show the garbage, show everything. So um, I got to course put my little thing up here you know for all the 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 uh, scumbag saboteurs here's my disclaimer that goes for the comment section sections of my art I am an artist and I am also an entertainer for anybody that's interesting I'm an artist and entertainer and this is a political channel Speaking on this um, Sussex Dogshite SS Polizei Unit podcast is Stephanie Gorellis. I went over with her. Um, I went over her. I explained who she was in the last video, which I will put the, the, the part one of this video in the comment or in the description box. Then Christopher Boozy and then some of the Sussex squads with probably Harry and Megan listening in. So let's get started. I'm going to pick up where we left off and then show you some slides. I obviously can't name names, but you know, the, the reporters, journalists, they're human beings. And yes, you know, some of them do have burner accounts um, and some of them will, you know, use their burner account to amplify something or retweet something. They're obviously journalists, royal reporters, commentators, whatever, uh, that don't like Megan and Harry that don't like Megan just for the fact that she's black and the fact that, you know, Harry married That's your assumption. It's just that simple. It, it just, Prove it. A lot it. of this is about race. Um, and that's, and, and really and truly, and I, I will say this on the record because I would say this, and anyone who asks me this question, I will say this just from we'll the see. that a, a white racists don't like it when you call them white racists. They don't like to be called racist when they know that they are racist. And people don't like um, to be called racist so when they're not these racist. These individuals that are doing this and trying to pretend as if this is entertainment um, get upset when the spotlight is put on them because now they're being painted as a racist. Well, if you talks like a duck and walks like a duck, God damn it, it's a duck. If you are talking constantly about a black woman and profiting off of her and doing what you're doing. Profiting off and, of her. <clears throat> doing it in a way that it is it is racist then what do you think you are so uh, obviously these commentators and these experts and whatever they can't be as blatant as the hate accounts so they do you know use burner accounts um they do do things that would be considered unprofessional when Prove they are poor and some as been stated have been court. Prove it. um and, and let me just you know i, I want to kind of get off topic a bit because I'm going to forget this. And I, and I got to say this, you know, I'm always asked like, what can we do? It, I'm always asked this question. And one of the things I can tell you is these people don't like to be exposed. And I, I'm not talking about doxing per se. I'm not talking about that. Um, but you know, it, it's time a spotlight is put on these people. If you're going to do this, oh. if this is something that you really believe in, then by God, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna use your real name. Then you're going to come out and say, okay, this is how I feel, this is who I am, and 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 do it. Um, but don't hide behind an account and think that you can have your cake and eat it too. You know. So if someone, for example, was to, and I'm not saying I'm going to do this, but if someone, for example, was to take out a full page ad, in who's account, who's going to do that, Christopher? And say, hey, look, well, this is such and such individual. And this is what they're doing. Do you think that person will still continue to do that? If yep. That was to happen. Yes, see, sir. So, it's so and I'm just, that's just a, a hypothetical there. But the point that I'm making is that there's always more than one way to skin a cat legally. You know, a lot of these people you can't sue them for defamation. You know, because of just the way the laws are. You know, in the UK versus the United States, it's it's very costly. 
the way the laws are, you know, in the UK versus the United States, it's it's very costly to do so. And they know that. If Harry and Meghan... Don't and Harry and Louis, Meghan have the money? They know who these people are. They have people who can easily... If we found this information out, they can find this information out. They can sue these individuals. But it's not... You know, for them, it's not something that's... It's a lose-lose situation. You're going around suing these hate accounts... And so then you look kind of pathetic and, and petty, to be honest. But then when you don't do it, they're just pushing this stuff out, and it's obviously causing harm to them. It's causing harm to to their family. You know, in the UK versus the United States, it's it's very costly. The point that I'm making is that there's always more than one way to skin a cat legally. You know, a lot of these people, you can't sue them for defamation, you know, because of just the way the laws are, you know, in the UK versus the United States. It's it's very costly to do so. And they know that. If Harry and Meghan, and believe me, they know who these people are. They have people who can easily, if we found this information out, they can find this information out. They can sue these individuals. But it's not... You know, for them, it's not something that's, it's a lose-lose situation. You're going around suing these hate accounts, and so then you look kind of pathetic and, and petty, to be honest. But then when you don't do it, they're just pushing this stuff out, and it's obviously causing harm to them. It's causing harm to, to their family. So like, what, so, like, what do you do? You're between a rock and a hard place. So that's yeah. why, you know, so, you know, that's why I say, like, what we're doing here in terms of the reports is to is to kind of do what Harry and, and Meghan can do, and we're not doing it on behalf of them. Mm. Believe me, like I said before, I've never spoken to Harry. I've never spoken to Meghan. I've never spoken to our representative. You spoke to here. somebody. I showed my last video. We're not being paid by Harry and Meghan. We're not being paid by the Sussex Squad. We're not being paid by anyone. Um, I am just tired of this. I'm tired of people of color. Ex- I'll shut up. Um, <laughs> no, no, because you know they talk about oh Meghan is not really black. Right, and so that's the way of of, of you know, trying to whitewash their their racism. Yeah. Um, Megan never did anything to these people, and this is something I said yesterday. Like, I don't care if Megan is the best or greatest person in the world, or the worst person in the world in terms of personality. It's not about that. Everyone is afforded some type of decency. Everyone, and I have not seen anything. Where I can say, well, got like, well, geez, you know, I can kind of understand where this hate is coming from, and that's no excuse. Like I said, no, no one deserves this much hate. I have not seen anything in the research that we've done that warrants this type of hate. That this is something I said yesterday. Like I don't care if Megan is the best or greatest person in the world or the worst person in the world in terms of personality. It's not about that. Everyone is afforded some type of decency. Everyone. And I have not seen anything where I can say, well, got like, well, geez, you know, I can kind of understand where this hate is coming from. And that's no excuse. Like I said, no, no one deserves this much hate. I have not seen anything in the research that we've done that warrants this type of hate. That's made him. This just unadulterated, irrational hate. Because it's become a soap opera. They dehumanize to you. People complain. But it's beyond Harry and Meghan in a lot of ways because it is black women, women of color, who are most who are most being targeted online, being called out our name, like sluts and whores, getting death threats. Like black women being, she's getting death threats for, speak, for speaking truth to power. It's that kind of stuff that needs to be dealt with because if they can do it to Harry and Meghan, they can do it to any of us. And like Christopher said, they look like losers going after somebody on YouTube. It's sort of like, don't you have anything better to do? But at the same time, when they don't do anything, it continues. So it's just really, it's a self, I don't want to say self-defeating cycle, but it's a vicious cycle that is taking place and something needs to be done. You know, Christopher has stood in the gap. You know, if nobody else will hold these people accountable, I'm glad that Christopher and Bob Sentinel have made it possible that you know you're not going to continue monetizing off this hate. Twitter won't Twitter won't bring down the hammer, but I will. I will expose you like the roaches that you are.
No, no thank, thank you, you Stephanie, Stephanie, for that. And for and Harry and, and, and Christopher kind of brought this on and talked about the fact that Harry and Meghan probably cannot possibly sue every single hater account here. But from a legal standpoint, can Harry and Meghan go after the the social media companies? Kind of like how we see when um, copyright infringement. I mean, we all know that our old Twitter account was taken down because of copyright infringement because a lot of these um, music companies go after these social media companies. Do we think can we do we think that something similar can happen, or is it because I forgot what law right? that protects them? Either it's two or three or two three zero that protects social media companies from lawsuits, or is this just like a pipe dream? Yeah, so uh, I, of course... This is I the lawyer not, uh, uh, that had to leave early. Expert, um, but as you said, there is that law that protects them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm not absolutely sure. What I actually... Uh, if it's not possible because of that law, I guess what would be fascinating is if what we're seeing now in the wake of for example, Black Lives Matter is that we're seeing some uh, shareholder suits arguing that these companies are not following up on some of the equity, racial equity policies they said they would institute. They haven't mm -hmm. seen any results from that. So I think it would be fascinating to see something similar with the social media companies uh, to the extent that they're protected by legislation, which again is something Congress can do something about, uh, mm -hmm. to the extent that they're protected, uh, to what extent should shareholders be saying, look, you have not been following your own policy? I, it's just so, there's so much going on that I just don't even know where to even start with with this whole thing. But I think in, in the case of, you know, and I think I, I would narrow the scope a little bit to kind of just Harry and Meghan, right? So, um, when Harry and Meghan say Harry decide, like say Harry decides, we know Meghan ain't going to sue, but Harry will. Um, say Harry decides to go after YouTube because I mean I think the most damage to them and even causing her to almost take her life came from YouTube. Uh, most of it, and, and then obviously with the urging of the British press and the British royal family, so. Could Harry sue YouTube for that? Would that would there be something that YouTube could be liable for? So the problem, yes, the problem is that Section Two Thirty that protects the uh, the computer service for right any third party content. So they're not treated as the publisher of that content. So therefore, Harry would have to go after the specific creator of the content. And so okay. again, we're back to that problem of perception that, that Chris is talking about. Now, if there is a company that is pushing out a substantial amount of this content, like there was, right, the company that was taking pictures of Archie, then you can go after a company a lot harder in the sense of perception to go after some individual YouTuber or content creator. I mean, Justin Bieber was able to do it successfully. I say it's just, it'll be too much. There's way more of Harry and Meghan hate websites and accounts out there. It would be a losing battle. Um, and I, I, the reason, I, just so there's, people... Yeah, there's also kind of the strive and effect kind of worry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. are, are you just drawing more attention to this stuff? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, I mean, I, the reason why I wanted to bring this up and say this because there is a there is a thought in the Sussex Squad. There's a lot of people saying, "Oh, they're not doing enough to stop these people. Why can't they suit them?" And, and and I think that you know people don't understand the law and they don't understand that it's more complicated. And if for me, like say Megan sues somebody like uh, Murky Meg, that's what Murky Meg is looking for. That is her come up. That's what she's been waiting for. She wants to be sued, just like Pierce Morgan wants to be mentioned by Megan, right? She wants them to sue her because she knows that that would elevate her profile. She, we, we're complaining about her making profit enough of a hate right now when no one, she's relatively unknown in the grand scheme of things. Um, but if Megan sues her or Harry sues her or say Yankee Wally, who is, <laughs> I just found out that she was a, 
but relevant grandmas who are in debt, who are drug addicts, who are racist, who have nothing going on for them, this would actually be the boost for them. It would actually encourage them rather than dissuade them from, from the hatred. So I wanted to bring that up and to kind of talk about it because I think this has been a conversation within the fandom. But anyway, I don't want to belabor a lot of topics. I want us to move on. And, uh, and right now, Megan and Harry are generating eyeballs. So Gee, I you know, wonder to why. talk about a smear campaign, uh, and, and let's, be, let's be fair here. Um, when we released the first report, it did get a lot of traction, and it did get a lot of media t- attention. Mm-hmm. So now the pushback to that is to talk about something else that, which may be not accurate. Mm-hmm. Um, and, well, and this happens with, with a lot of things. This is not just about Harry and, and, and Megan. We saw in the 2020 mm-hmm. election uh, things that were being reported by the press about uh, Hillary Clinton were just, just completely false. And a lot of that stuff was coming from social media and, and being regurgitated um, in the media. Uh, so there is another problem that, that you know, we didn't really address it here in terms of holding the media also accountable for a lot of this stuff. That's what Harry but said. I, I want to go back a bit to the whole strike sand effect and everything else. Um, it's really about being creative. Um, I, I personally don't think Harry and Lincoln should go sue individuals. Obviously, I, I've said, stated that. But they could, they could go after certain, uh, maybe certain journalists um, who. Are, are, Angela who are Levine doing this, like who's obviously amplifying this. Um, they could maybe possibly do that, but like I said, another thing is to fight fire with fire. I mean, like I said, going into a local paper, you know, putting on an ad saying this is what this individual is doing. I don't think that's considered defamation. Defamation if they are actually doing it. Um, a lot of these, a lot of these people are cowards. I can say that. I'm not. Um, they are cowards. So if a light, if a spotlight is being shined on them, they a, a lot of them would shut their accounts down and, and run in a hole because they don't want to possibly do that. But like I said, another thing is to fight fire with fire. I mean, like I said, going into a local paper, you know, putting on an ad saying this is what this individual is doing, I don't think that's considered defamation. Defamation if they are actually doing it. Um, a lot of these, a lot of these people are cowards. I can say that. Um, they are cowards. So if a light, if a spotlight is being shined on them, they a, a lot of them would shut their accounts down and, and run in a hole because Gee, they I don't wonder why. want that extra attention. And that's going back to to what I said earlier about um, Taz. She's she's behaving this way, and and and, and Yankee Wally and Murky Murk and the rest of them are acting this way because one, their their income is being threatened now. You know, if you have international attention being put on you, a spotlight being put on you, are they, are, is YouTube going to say, okay, we're no longer going to monetize these channels? You know, they're not so worried about getting your Twitter account suspended because they know they can create a new Twitter account and grow their followers, whatever, but, you know, creating a whole new channel and starting from scratch is much harder when, you know, when you're monet- when this is your main source of income. So I think, you know, Groups have to start getting creative and start going after the folks who are monetizing this stuff. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it's all about. And and I agree with you because we know that, you know, actually Murky Meg, um, which I rarely ever mention her on this this podcast. I don't. Um, I I, I think probably this is the third or fourth time I've ever mentioned her in the three years that we've had this this account, but she was mad because I called out some of the things that she has done to Megan, and she claimed, you know, I was affecting her brand, you know, and she she clearly said, stated that, she said, as you all know, I run a YouTube account, a well-known podcast, tweeted a very defamatory comment on Twitter, the tweet states that I, Marky Meg, sent someone over to New York while Megan was there in February 2019 to try to stab her. This is extremely defamatory and wholly untrue. It's not only that only that but this could have a negative impact on my brand and channel her brand and channel is to dehumanize debase and literally abuse and harass and target Meghan Markle a black woman that is her brand okay 
And so she said, it's worrying that this account, I believe, was involved in doxing me. That never happened. I don't know anything about We don't know anything about her. We never have. Uh-huh. And we don't care about her. Um, doxing me previously in the suspended attempt, account. She can't screenshot it. She can't post it because that never happened. And, uh, and I told her, I said, prove it and sue me. Uh, because I will drag you in court. You know, you're going to sue a lawyer. You're going to get dragged. But anyway... Um, this is the second account. We got suspended for copyright infringement on Drake. But you're allowed to have another account. And Christopher Boozy, you're talking to Chris.